Hey guys, hoping all is well. So in this video, we're going to be continuing our read-along of the Secret Zoo Riddles in Danger. And in our last video, we ended chapter 32. So we're going to be starting today with chapter 33. And as always, please feel free to uh, follow along. And uh, we'll go ahead and jump into it here. Chapter 33. Dangers in the Darkness. Noah ran up the staircase to the entrance of Creepy Critters where shards of glass and men metal pieces lay all around. The dark, doorless entrance yawned like the mouth of a monster. He stepped through, debris crunching beneath his feet. Inside, it was pitch black. If the building had emergency lighting, it wasn't working. He tried to recall the exhibit from previous visits. He knew that in front of him stretched a long hallway. Twice as wide as the ones in his school, it had countless aquariums set in the walls. It led to a great room in the center of the building, known as the Creepy Core, from which other halls branched off, zigzagging and threading through one another like the passages of a maze. The swampy odor of soil, mildew, water, and fish hung in the air. Without electricity and the usual voices of filters and bubbles, the exhibit was eerily quiet. Other than an occasional croak, hiss, or rattle, there was no sound. Noah reached his hand back, intending to wave his group inside, only to wave his, have his wrist seized by something hiding in the darkness. Before Noah could yelp, a hand pressed over his mouth. A voice soft spokely in his ear. Don't panic. It's us. Noah knew the person the voice belonged to. Tamron. Slowly, the descender removed his hand. In a hushed voice, Noah asked, How'd you get in? back door, Tamron whispered. We were standing right here when the Sasquatches busted out of the main entrance, but we weren't coordinated enough to attack. Are the others here? Noah asked. Solana, you here? Yeah, the darkness answered. And Hannah? To his left, Noah heard the soft pop of Hannah's chewing gum. Tamron's silhouette appeared in the doorway. Noah saw his armored helmet at the start of his long tail. The descender waved for Sam and the other scouts to come forward. In seconds, everyone was inside the building. In a voice that was much too loud, Richie said, Man, it's dark in here. Shh! Ella scolded him in a whispered yell. I know we're not as smart as you, but I'm pretty sure we all figured that out. Sam asked Tamron, Could you tell which way the Sasquatches went? Down the core, then to the right. Makes sense. How come? Asked Noah. That's where Gator Falls is. The alligator exhibit. It has the biggest portal in here in this, to the secret zoo. Could be big trouble if the Sasquatches bust it open. The group fell silent. No one had any doubts about what they were up against. Noah heard Sam move to the front of everyone. Let's go. Stay close and stay quiet. His footsteps faded as they headed into the darkness. They all followed, treading lightly. Noah held his arms out in front of him, feeling the space to ensure it was empty. Occasionally, he'd brush Ella, whom he was trailing, her soft ponytail sweeping across his fingers. Noah strained to see something, anything. With no windows to the outside world, the darkness was absolute. As he moved, he had no idea how much distance he had covered or how much he had yet to go. Sensing their passage, the animals in the aquariums seemed to become anxious. They began to croak and squeak and rattle. Tails splashed above water, hard shells tapped against glass. Noah used the sounds, their volume and direction, to measure his surroundings. He calculated the width of the hall, the height of the ceiling, the empty distance around him. In his head, he formed a faint image of the building. Perhaps a minute into the walk, some sounds grew softer and others faded away altogether. The hallway was gone. Noah could hear its absence, which meant they'd moved into the creepy core. Noah lifted its image from his memory. It was as much as 75 feet across, and its walls held up a low, domed roof made of cement. The glass acted as a clear ceiling to section off the dome creating an overhead aquarium. It was full of spiders. Some were small and lanky, and others had bodies as round and plump as grapes. 
Though the space was crowded with branches and leafy plants, spiders could always be seen crawling across the glass. Sam whispered, Which hallway is Gator Falls in? When no one responded, Noah took a chance. I think it's three hallways down from the one where we're standing. We need a light, said Megan. Richie, Ella whispered, you're nerd, dear. You have your pen light? Richie loudly explored his pocket. Yes, everything's accounted for. Hold on, said Tamron. No lights. We got Sasquatches in here. And what would you rather do? Ella said. Stand here until we get tangled by bugs and animals? No thanks. Tamron stayed silent. After a moment, he said, Sam, what are you... The building filled with the sound of breaking glass. In one of the branching halls, an aquarium had shattered. Noah spun to his right. He peered out and tried to pull an image out of the darkness. Nothing. Glass continued to clink against the floor. Then all at once, the noises stopped. The fresh silence was terrifying. What was that? Someone gasped. A response came, but not from anyone in their group. Far down a hall came a low, rumbling growl, the unmistakable sound of an alligator. It was followed by another and another. Then there was a hiss and the crash of a body against a wall. Gator Falls, Sam said. It's open! Something grunted, something nearby. It had been an animal sound, quick and deep. Noah glanced around, but couldn't see a thing. The animal grunted again, louder this time. Something passed by Noah, and a loud clump, long clump of hair brushed his hand. He yelped and pulled away, his eyes dancing as he tried in vain to raise an image in the darkness. Something's here, he said. Richie, said Sam, go ahead, use your pen light. A blood-curdling scream filled Noah's head. Someone spun around and knocked him into someone else. This person jolted back, and for a few seconds, Noah was bounced around like a pinball. When a shriek came from a second time, Noah realized it was Solana. Richie, you're light, Sam commanded. A narrow beam suddenly severe, severed the darkness. It jerked in different directions until it landed on Solana, revealing a, of a scene of such horror that Noah felt his insides turn. A Sasquatch was dragging Solana down the hall toward Gator Falls. Chapter 34 Chaos and Creepy Critters As Richie squirmed in fear, the beam of his flashlight jumped around, streaking the air and revealing the Sasquatch like the flashes of a strobe light. As the monster backed down the hall, Solana's quills sprang from her jacket and stabbed deep into its body. Howling in pain, it released the descender, who then slid down it, burying the spikes into its legs. The Sasquatch lurched backward and swiped at its chest, tearing out the quills. Move! Sam commanded. Richie moved the light on Sam, who ran past the Sasquatch and charged toward Gator Falls. His wings were open from one wall to wall, their tips skimming the aquariums and startling the creatures inside. Tamron and Hannah rushed after Sam, their unique powers revealed in Richie's shifting beam of light. Tamron was covered in animal armor, the spiked tip of his tail poised to strike. Excuse me. The bulging soles of Hannah's knee-high boots were now at least ten inches thick, and they sprang her forward five or six feet with each step. As Hannah came upon the Sasquatch, she pushed off the ground and spun high in the air like a gymnast. She kicked off her high right foot and landed the sole of her boot on the chest of the Sasquatch, which flew backward into the wall, shattering aquariums and spraying glass. The beast, unconscious or dead, lay in a web of busted metal framework, the contents of the aquariums spilling over its limp body. Spiders, cockroaches, centipedes, and beetles smacked the floor and scattered like beads of mercury. Hannah landed on her feet and continued forward, her stride unbroken. Richie, Tam Tam Tamron said, we need that light. Richie didn't move. Richie, Tamron called again. In the dim 
glow of the pen light, Noah saw Ella standing beside Richie. Let's go, she said. It's okay. I'm scared too. They looked at each other for a moment, then turned and raced down the hall. As Noah stared, started to chase after them, someone grabbed his wrist. Unable to see without Richie's pen light, he turned to where he thought a person was standing. A voice said, I'll catch up with you guys. It was Megan. Catch up? What are you? We'll never do this without more light. These aquariums, they're all connected. If not through the grottos, then through the secret zoo. So? She released his wrist. So I'm going to light this place up. What are you talking about? Staring at the darkness, Noah waited for an answer. When none came, he realized that she was gone. I hope you know what you're doing, he said to the empty air. With that, Noah rushed down the hallway toward Gator Falls. He had no idea that he was about to face more danger than he had ever known. Chapter 35 Trapped As Richie ran, the beam from his penlight slashed through the darkness, exposing random images. Fake slime dripping from the ceiling, colorful frogs sticking to aquarium glass, rows of feathers shifting across Sam's wings, Tamron's tail sweeping along the floor. The howl of a Sasquatch shook the walls. An answering howl followed, then a third, then a chorus of deep, ape-like grunts. The noises echoed. Somewhere in front of Noah, Hannah shrieked for Sam. Then glass rained down on the hard floor. The light swung around the, to reveal Sam falling backward into Tamarin and both of them dropping to the ground. Standing above them was a Sasquatch, and another, and another. Richie screamed and dropped the pen light, which pinged the floor and rolled to a stop, its beam pouring across a narrow stretch of tiles. An instant later, the light was kicked and sent sliding down the hall in a dizzying circle. It finally came to a stop beneath the foot of a Sasquatch, which promptly crushed it, surrendering, surrendering the hallway to pure darkness. Noah halted. The ground felt slippery underfoot, and he realized he was standing on the tip of Sam's wing. He backed away until he could feel the tiles once more. Silence. Noah had no idea what was happening. The darkness concealed all. It seemed a living thing, a bold new enemy as powerful and dangerous as the Sasquatches. Then the hallway filled with a new sound, the loud hiss of an alligator. It was nearby perhaps only a few steps away. Noah heard the growl of a Sasquatch and whirled around, straining to see something, anything. The monsters were prowling around the scouts and descenders, their prey. They were preparing to strike. Something bumped into Noah and he spun in panic. Darkness and fear magnified his confusion. Sam's voice rose, Descenders! Sam was aware. Sam was somewhere near the center of a hallway, a few feet ahead. Voices rose from different spots, one after another. Here, called Solana. Here, echoed Hannah. Right behind you, said Tamron. The Sasquatches growled. Anyone hurt? Sam asked. No one said yes. And the scouts, you guys okay? Everyone but Megan answered. Noah used their voices to determine their whereabouts. They were all nearby, but scattered. Something swept along Noah's foot. He jumped away toward the middle of the hall, where the side of his lower leg pressed against something. Hearing, hearing a growling growl, Noah realized he was standing against an alligator. Afraid to move again, he scanned the floor and tried to see into the darkness. A wasted effort. Across the hallway, Richie shrieked. Then he said, Alligators! They're all over the place! A second alligator bumped Noah's leg, this time his right. It quickly veered toward Noah, forcing his foot up along its body. Noah found himself standing on one leg, his toes skipping off the knobby surface of the alligator's back. Sam called out, Everyone, stay still. A third alligator st struck the front of the leg Noah was standing on. It hissed. Then it gushed its warm breath over Noah's shin as it opened its mouth. 
Noah sensed its snout just inches from his knee, and he imagined the uneven rows of fangs hovering near his flesh. Noah wobbled and tried to keep from falling. There was nowhere for him to go. Across the dark hallway, Ella gasped. Richie whimpered. In horror, Noah understood that what was happening to him was happening to everyone. A crowd of alligators were squeezing themselves around the scouts. They were totally trapped. And I'll stop the video there, ending at ch uh, ending chapter 35. But I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. As you guys can see, it's getting a little bit more, uh, definitely more intense. Um, definitely a lot more uh, of an, uh, a tense and uneasy situation for the action scouts right now. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And in our next video, we'll be continuing our read-along of The Secret Zoo Riddles in Danger, continuing with Chapter 36. But as always, guys, please take good care of yourselves and be safe. Thank you.